Graham McDowell is one of golf's most recognizable faces, partially because he's won on both the European and PGA Tours, but most likely because he's got lots of personality and charisma. The Northern Irishman has two PGA Tour titles under his belt, including the RBC Heritage Classic, but most memorably, it's the 2010 U.S. Open at Pebble Beach. I had a chance to hit a few balls with him earlier this season. All right, Graham, uh, 2013 is, uh, is over, and uh, it was a pretty good year for you. I mean, all, com all combined, three wins uh, worldwide. Uh, You've got to be pleased with the season. A little bit schizophrenic at times, perhaps with some wins and uh, missed cuts back-to-back, -back, but, but sum it up for us. Yeah, I mean, I think schizophrenic is an interesting way to describe it. You know, I described it at one point during the season as, a, as binary golf. You know, it was either a one or it was a zero. And, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes you have seasons where you're very consistent but don't get a lot out of it. 2012 was a bit that way for me. Great performance in the major championships. Played very consistently, uh, consistency all year, but couldn't seem to find that win. Couldn't find the seem to find find the W much. But uh, 2013 rolls in, uh, like you say, up and down, uh, missing a lot of cuts. But uh, you know, three wins to my name. Uh, very pleasing. You know, especially uh, the RBC Heritage at Hilton Head was uh, was was definitely the highlight of my season to, to play as well as I did there in, a, in the last round in some some windy conditions, tough conditions, great event with, with a lot of history and heritage and then the Volvo World match play and, uh, and the Open to, Open to France back in Europe as well so um, some good performances in the WGCs, disappointing in the major championships you know so my focus moving into 2014 is really trying to be ready for that summer of golf, trying to be ready for that stretch of US Open, the Open, uh, US PGA into the FedEx playoffs and uh, into the Ryder Cup as well in 2014. So, uh, you know, a lot to pull on this year, a lot to learn from, and uh, I'm excited about uh, getting ready for next season. A lot of players, and I think you have mentioned this as well, perhaps trying to cut back a little bit on the travel, maybe not play as many tournaments all over the world. It's tough though, there are a lot of demands on your time and a lot of demands to show up at different uh, tournaments, but do you, would you like to kind of cut it back just a little bit? I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep, cut it back really uh, in all aspects of what I'm doing around golf, you know. Um, the, the more successful you come, the more demands on your time, the more your sponsors kind of, uh, uh, you know, want, want a piece of you. And, and, you know, of course, they are very important to, to what I do. You know, I'm very lucky to have a great portfolio of amazing sponsors. And, uh, you know, so making sure I prioritize my time and choosing the right events that fit me and playing the right amount, not too little, not too much, being ready on a Thursday. That, that's the key, really, you know, being prepared. I'm a guy who likes to prepare meticulously and uh, yeah, so getting all that right, putting all that together is, is what scheduling is all about and it's an art form and it's, a, it's an ever evolving landscape as well. Yeah, and there's a lot of amazing events around the world. You're having to say no to, to great events sometimes and that's hard to do. But um, getting it right, uh, do, you know, what suits one player doesn't necessarily suit the next so I'm trying to work out what makes me tick. McDowell is a member of Team RBC and played in his first RBC Canadian Open in 2013 at Glen Abbey. Yeah, my first season as, a, as an RBC ambassador certainly was a fairly successful one, you know, winning uh, the RBC Heritage there at Hilton Head. That was a, a nice way to start my uh, relationship with RBC, doing amazing things within golf, you know, with uh, with both their events and the RBC Canadian Open as well and, and all the amazing ambassadors that they have. Um, you know, my, uh, my Canadian Open experience uh, didn't really go as planned from a golf point of view. Uh, I certainly enjoyed Toronto's hospitality though, you know, I went to a ball game and just enjoyed uh, some great food and some great atmosphere in the city. Uh, Glen Abbey was a beautiful golf course, which I just didn't perform very well on, but uh, excited to go to Montreal next year. I've heard amazing things about it. Uh, Royal Montreal, uh, just a, supposed to be a great, a great old school golf course and, and one I'm very, very excited to, to be there next year and hopefully competing. Uh, and finally, uh, you made a list last year, which is a pretty interesting list of the, the nicest guys on the PGA Tour. I think you were ranked fifth. I'm, I'd, I'd have you a little higher in my own personal <laughs> list, but, but seriously, how important is something like that being known as one of the nice guys out there, one of the guys who makes time for the fans and for the media? Yeah, I mean, you know, most importantly, I think that list was coming from the people who, who matter, you know. I mean, uh, the fans, the spectators, uh, you know, the people that, that make golf tournaments work, you know, officials and, and cameramen and, and, and the media and, and just the, the, the people who know the players inside and out, you know, of course, it is nice to, to feel like uh, I do a good job uh, at what I do you know I'm trying to be a role model for kids I'm trying to uh, be professional I'm trying to uh, be the best I can be at my sport and uh, you know, it's nice to make sure that I make people happy while I'm doing it as well so that's uh, that's important to me all right we'll see you in Montreal at the RBC Canadian Open looking forward to it okay